actively smothered, you know, that entire set, um, you know, just was still able to get enough space. And baby, the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> I've been waiting for okay, this. man, I'll see you. So, I'll see you in two and a half hours. All right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody, look, we we just had quite the match. We have now reached that point where it's time to stretch, get up, relax, go make yourself a sandwich, take a shower, do whatever you gotta do. I know you need it uh, because we're gonna, we're gonna be here for a while. We got a classic, Sinji versus John Numbers, the infamous two a duo that removed best of fives from the, from top eights at White at Zeno Locals. Man. Uh, this is this is this is so nostalgic for me. You know how many Zetas I've spent just like sort of sitting here and like losing my mind. Uh, Are like, you aware like, that you have spent a majority of your years growing up throughout school commentating this set? You have spent so many years of your life just commentating these matchups. I'm, I'm like I feel like a veteran going into this. You know, like, like, we're in this one for the long haul. They're just doing, you know, the regular offstage shenanigans. Uh, you know, Sinji trying to find Hydra's numbers being able to move around so effectively. Already a minute in, nobody ab above 60% right now. Yeah, now honestly, one of the, uh, all jokes aside, I always love to joke at the start of this, but if you ever want to look at how to properly, like, utilize defensive habits, play on a way that you are confident even when you're at high percent watching these two is a testament to that because they don't give an inch ever you have to work so hard for your ko options in this match between these two because sinji is willing to recognize that john numbers is going to stall out and wait for his ability to get on stage he's going to use those volleys to be able to try and uh, zone break and get in Sinji's just gonna put up the fire hydrant to prevent any type of zoning attempts. Likewise, yep. on the other side, Numbers knows exactly how much he's willing to do that, so both of them have to wait for that proper, like, either the key, the bell setup, or deep breathing just to find that opening. Usually, there's so little that John can actually do to challenge the hydrant. It's able to eat up a lot of those sun salutations. It gives Pac-Man a lot of the cover that he is looking for. And right now, that's a Pac-Man with a bell, baby. So that means he is going to be looking for the stock. For the numbers to go low, no punish. Once again, uh, just keeps on finding these up. It tries to go for the finish here with that side B. But numbers finally getting a hidden because of it. Yeah, that's definitely a good option. You also you established early, like, hey, I'm looking for some air dodges, which is make it is, is gonna make it a little bit easier for Sinji to find one of those jumps to the back air later on. Oh, that was almost a good call, and the down air shield poke not gonna do it just yet, even at 156. Numbers is so hard to KO at high percents too. It's just it's so hard because he's so good at his DI, numbers so good so, at his delays. You know, numbers is so difficult to kill at high percents. Sinji is, but that's gonna be the down air. Love the way that Sinji's using down air in the corner. You know, the best thing that you can do against somebody with so much mix like numbers is just to throw out an active hitbox in every spot possible. Right there, Sinji able to get back onto the stage and now controlling it with Hydrant with uh, Galaxian. But wow, I love these high recoveries from John right now. Yeah, good damage awareness too, because Numbers was pretty much always taking a punish right there. So rather than going in towards the left where the Galago is going, he's willing to take a dash attack, only get 17% out of it. So that's good. Like, it's, you can see the patient just waiting, but good job by Sinji also waiting that extra second too, just to bait the movement out of him to catch and get a little bit more damage on him. The way that Sinji just making the most use out of his bonus foods right now, which is working out so well for him. John can't seem to find any sorts of openings. Sinji's able to play so defensively, but gonna be jumping back onto the Sun Salutation. Sinji probably thinking the projectile was gonna go faster, or, you know, he was a little bit floatier than he actually was. Whatever the reason, uh, that's exactly what John needs, just to slowly even up that stock count, because Weefit can make it up so quickly. Yeah, it's actually always hilarious to me, too, when I watch these uh, matches between these two, because they will actually get health back, and it'll be the smallest amount to some people. But over time, that actually matters it's, a lot. It's a little bit of chip, you know, just as important as chip damage. You got to take into account, like, how important chip healing is for numbers. It's the incentive for you to keep on pressing. It's this pressure that your advantage actually is never as big as you think it is. And it's going to mean that numbers is always living a little bit longer than you expect him to. Yeah, and not just that, too. You saw uh, that Sinji reacted to one of those side Bs with his own so he could get... Uh, the heal. It's very small, but it does change up the percents when somebody can find KO, especially when v <laughs> both of these players, I uh, was saying before, the tri-state mo uh, like, mantra of never die, these two really are the epitome of that. 
Yeah, I mean, these are like definitely like two top of the line plays when it comes to survivability, when it comes to just like impeccable DI and understanding all of the offstage options. I mean, look at this. Had John not been healing up until that point, <laughs> what a setup. That was beautiful. I like that so much because he forced numbers to go low in a way that he, you know, felt a little comfortable. It's like, okay, I see the slow fruit. I'm obviously not jumping towards that. But if you're not prepared for where that's going to send you, gets the KO and still 69%. That's pretty comfortable for, a, you know, a decent lead for Sinji right now. Now he can actually afford to trade a little bit in this last stock. For sure. And right now, you know, like, numbers with the same stock, you know, like, that's fine. It still can be an even game. But as soon as Sinji has that stock lead, he can play in a way that's untouchable. He doesn't take any risks. He doesn't try to press his advantage. Gets the cherry off stage. Numbers trying to get his way back on, but that was not a primed hydrant. Wasn't able to deflect it with the up air. And now John, completely out of options. Still going to be going low. Finds his way back on. Wow. Honestly, it's a never a long option though. When you subscribe to HO3K, sub hype, thank you for a regular for coming through with the Prime. Yeah! And honestly, this is just, it's so good the way that Sinji has been dealing with one of the characters who has like pretty much the best stall off stage. And you can't stall wow. on stage anymore because that bell's gonna take game one. Yeah, um, I have to say, Sinji was just doing a really good job of just like going high a lot of the time. Uh, John did not find any answers to Hydrant that game, right? Was not able to mm -hmm. call out a lot of Sinji's double jump Hydrants, which is a very common way for a lot of different Pac-Man players to be able to land. We saw John try to go up there and challenge it with Upper, but it always seemed Sinji was just a little bit too high uh, for him to be able to get hit by it. He wasn't being called out on those Hydrants. He wasn't being edge-guarded too much either. Um, Sinji's just so comfortable with his recovery mix. Um, yeah. And Sinji just really had a way of whittling down a lot of John's offstage options until yeah, also, he couldn't I, do anything. I just noticed we missed that follow. Thank you so much for that follow earlier mm -hmm. today. Um, one of the things that I'm extremely impressed by is not just the hydrants in center stage, but the utilization of using hydrants in a way that bounce, or, and also, uh, I believe that was a melon, to not just that kill setup, but it consistently forced John numbers to go low. And because he was mm -hmm. going low, he was able to go down off stage, beat him out the down air because he knows that that up he's not going to beat it and just constantly get the KO. Great job by Sinji in game one. But we already know Numbers is going to find the adjustments to game two. Absolutely. Numbers, I mean, Numbers, you know, truly quite like a chiropractor, able to find the adjustments that he needs uh, throughout the set. Um, you know, some more higher coverage would definitely be completely welcome. Um, but then just like finding a way just to not burn as many resources as, you know, He's coming back onto the stage. That's the John Classic. The roll from ledge into the F tilt gets gets him every time. It really does. Like it's one of those things. Like he's not gonna do it again, right? He's not gonna do it again, right? He's like, why have I been hit by it four times? It just gets into your head. But now you can see Numbers is willing to like zone in a different ma uh, pattern until you get open by, uh, by Pac Man. People s can sleep very quickly on wow. all these coverage options and the damage, but good job delaying, not trying to jump in because that fourth match would have destroyed that stock. You sure? I mean, honestly, that was just like so smart from Zunji. Do you understand like how much time it takes to be able to go in there and be to understand like I will go in here and even if my opponent texts, I have a punish nonetheless. Zunji is ready every single step of the way. Um, you know, be it tech or no tech at the edge of the stage. It's just such good play. Yeah, that's just that in-depth matchup knowledge and also that player habit knowledge. He knew that the tech was probably going to come, therefore covering it with the back air, therefore covering it again to push him away so he could possibly get the jump in with the forward smash. And you see right here, both of them, they're so... The reason why these matches take so long is because they respect each other to the point where you can't overcommit because they know the damage is not going to be worth it to take. And Sinji finally looking at what is the first stock deficit of this set. However, 96% on numbers, that stock could go away very soon but then there's like this always pressure of like oh my god i need to be able to take john stock right now because he's just going to be able to get percent for himself over and over i love the way that sinji is using cherry in this matchup that's not exactly one of the foods that you see coming out from pac the most often but it's like used in such a way that it covers header it covers sun salutation yep. and it covers a lot of john's recovery angles yeah, it's just a quick enough active hitbox that bounces in a way that forces number to have to respect it. And also going once again, using the strawberry that time to try and challenge him and he forces him to go low once again. That downer is putting in so much work this set. Again, it's just like such an active hitbox. It's challenging all the space that John wants to be occupying in the moment. 
Um, that Galaxia, that, I mean, that projectile was a penance. It just said, hey, is that a fully charged projectile? Uh, it, it, it just exists as though, you know, the projectile wasn't there to begin with. I that Galaxia it. built different. That went through so many different hits just to navigate everything he was doing. We're gonna use it right now on the Fire Hydra to try and get him to jump, but numbers did not do it. He waited it out, and yet he still covered him with the roll. Still only 56%, but every single bit of percent is so hard fought right now. Yeah, then just like both two fighting for even the smallest interactions, Sinji taking any opportunity he can to charge bonus food, but you know, John is just taking that sweet old time getting back onto the stage. John doing what he does best, playing out of the corner, you know, just having having the time of his life. Honestly, no no incentive to get back onto San Jose stage anytime soon. Yeah, really just vibing off stage. Just <laughs> he's like, I'm cool. I'm, I'm chilling. Why am I gonna interact? Throws up I like the idea of throwing up that apple to try and maybe get a bad air dodge out of Sinji, but those don't really exist too much for Sinji unless he's getting pressured to like non-existence. <laughs> but that attempt again and then also covering with the get up attack, still forcing him off. What's he gonna do? He goes down there again with the down air. I wow. I love the persistence of Sinji. He just he just like he is absolutely nothing because he has a really good understanding of when John will be using his Haru when he no longer has to be afraid of that as an option right and then just keeps on going diving over and over again and keeps on finding those down in one of the most consistent ways that he gets that damage he gets those ledge traps he had the right idea on covering yeah. the hole but just a frame too late to connect the jab it seemed like one of those quick seconds where he didn't believe hard enough, and I think that numbers reacted so fast to that setup. It's like, oh, wait, he's already here, so I just gotta put up this safe jab. Because if he knew, that was either a throw or a potential forward smash, and that was also rolling in, so it could have been a DI mix-up, but either way, numbers still holding on to this lead. What, like, what do you think is the big thing that numbers has been able to do in this game to to adjust around what Sinji was doing so on game one? Um, that's a good question. Honestly, cheating a little bit more. Um, <laughs> that, that balance in back is almost killing. I love John's versatility to be able to get it. But honestly, just like he's winning a lot more of these interactions. He just made some really slight adjustments to his spacing. And the way that he is recovering is so much smarter. Sinji keeps on trying to go down there with the down end, with the preemptive option, but it's not accounting for John's drift. John has been mixing up his a lot of his recovery angles. That time he decided to go high and was able to take the stock. But thank you so much to Skunkle NYC for the sub. Hope everything is good. I hear gaming. Thank you for that sub. We appreciate it. Also, like something that we, we've we've known, but it's it just goes to show every time these two play. He who gets first stock usually wins. It's so important between these two to have a stock lead because th then their game plan is effective. Both mm -hmm. of them want to be the one to set up, force the other to come in, and make it so they got to be stressed out by trying to choose the right option to approach. Even though they're both completely content if they need to to go to time, you still have to eventually approach. So the fact that Sinji was forced to go in more often on numbers and couldn't find the KOs where it was necessary, kind of like right there, it, it really played into numbers favor. We said it before, Numbers is going to make the adjustment game two. Now we got to go to game three to see which one of them is going to walk away with uh, the new changes. For sure, yeah, they're going to be going to get right to town and city. Um, wow, <laughs> like they just both have so much space here. Oh goodness. They have so much space here. They're just both kind of chilling in you know, one another's corners and they're just like sort of inching toward each other, like saying, am I going to be the one to break the space for you? And then Numbers Ooh. doing what he does best. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. I saw numbers in the triple digits over there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my. That's, uh, that's look, that's the type of money I'd like to see on a paycheck, not here on the ping. So let's go ahead and calm these frames down real quick. Uh, things are starting to change up a little bit. Seems like we're going to possibly reset the match to try and cut this out. Man, I don't even know what happened, but we just started to drop the packets all over the place. Oh man, sometimes it really be like that. I would like to see them sort of try to play it out of this connection. I think there's like, and it's like, I think there's like a little masochist in everybody. All right, I was gonna say, look, you, you're, you're, you're a fan of self-inflicted pain on that one. Please don't. No, no, no. I don't want to see them try and win that match. Uh, but one of the things that is crazy, right? This whole tournament, this whole thing is built around having land, local, region lock, and everything. And yet somehow, some way, Nintendo Online decided to play. Yeah. It found its way into this. It started screwing with us regardless. But at least while we wait, we can look at that Macharino number on the top. Look at that, $1,000 for y'all. $1,000. Who didn't sign up. <laughs>
Man, that's a, that's a thousand dollars going right back into the pockets of one of the best, one of the loudest, one of the most vocal, and one of the most menacing grassroots scenes anyway. So honestly, I just love the fact that all this money is going to be going back to support the players, going back to the people that like spend literally thousands of hours, or maybe not so much, like practicing this game day in and day out. You know, the people out here who stream every day, who grind every day, who go yep. to every single Wi-Fi tournament possible. So honestly, Matcherino is just like such an excellent way to be able to give back. Guys, if you haven't done so already, you should go on Matcherino. You can find the link in the chat, do exclamation mark Matcherino. Uh, and just all you have to do is type in the little coupon code and we just get money. It's literally free money. It's fantastic. And also all love, no hate whatsoever for everything that the House of 3000 does Absolutely. for the community. Right now, not only is Matcherino helping out with this big pop bonus, but the fact that this is even going on, consistently making sure that y'all have something to do every single week, every single Wednesday, and now having these monthlies back to try and give back to to just some type clubs, of memory. But you like these big, just like little hangouts with all like, these different- Fight clubs are oh, hilarious. Fight clubs are, <laughs> there, there's something. There's definitely something, yes. There's, 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 there's a term for it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's call it. Big, they, look, it's top of the line degeneracy. That's what we'll call it. But it, it's it's just, it's a good time. It's a good time with a bunch of people that you haven't been able to see in a while. And it's just, we're doing what we got to do to get through the things nowadays. But the fact that this is going on right now, if you have not already, if you're lurking in the chat, hit the follow button. And if you can sub, because every single bit of support goes back to the staff that puts in all this work the people who try to hide behind the scenes helper and devin and anybody else who makes efforts of course yeah uh, d d it's it's really it, it goes without saying oh and go to the youtube too because the sub did every bit as well mm -hmm. yeah just want to point totally. out that the all the money that was raised for the matcherino is 100 percent for the pot so please subscribe to support us directly or you know donate mm -hmm. directly if you want click the sad kirby tear them up in the description <laughs> Yeah, for real, like every single bit, all of it just goes straight to the pot, which is why I was yelling at y'all before, because people just said, if, if you didn't sign up, you're missing out on $1,000, but you can help out by adding 50 cents just by using that free code region lock. Mm -hmm. It's just all it takes is a few minutes of your time, and it helps out. And this is going to be happening on the regular. They plan to have these type of monthlies often. It's called the monthly for a reason. So make sure you do not miss it next time. And, and um, by the way, you know what also costs absolutely nothing? Following my lovely, amazing, incredible co-caster, Ajax, <laughs> at Ajax HQ, on Twitter, Ajax underscore HQ. Um, honestly, one of the commentators I look up to the most. Just wanted to- no, I, I, I appreciate that very much, so it's Everything is all Ajax HQ. Of course, make sure you follow Daramgar on all social medias and Twitch as well. The clips that I've been seeing you put up lately are actually hilarious. I've been, yeah. uh, I constantly scroll through Twitch just, excuse me, Twitter, just to see what kind of stupid stuff people are up to nowadays. And it's usually Wadi's reactions, or I'll see you making fun of somebody's stupidity. I think I saw Lonesome talk about why do I play like this? He <laughs> just like narrowed off stage. Like why does he play like this? Why does he do that? You ever, you ever just look at the way that he plays, and it just makes you It cry. was comical. I, I was laughing oh, so hard. <laughs> but honestly, every single little bit, you know, if you follow us, it's great. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just... It, we're just having a good time. We're we're chilling, and there's a lot more still to come. Uh, mm -hmm. And every single bit of support helps all parties involved. We're just waiting to see what goes on with this right now. We're trying to get some internet solutions solved so you can continue to be excited, thrilled, and enjoyed by the Xeno Classic. It really is. If you you don't have a rite of passage in the house if you haven't been a part of a uh, Sinji versus Number Set. I saw somebody say it in the chat, and it is 100% true. <laughs> Wow. Um, so just like a quick little update on what's happening. Um, so we got the update, you know, John's Wi-Fi hopefully is, is functional, like we're playing for the best, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, if they maybe want to play it out despite not immaculate connection, that would be okay too. There was a I part open of me up. that wants to see that. I think, I think that'd be interesting to see. We are so professional. I open up the um, Discord uh, chat to see what's going on. <laughs> I just see we have a copy pasta for every occasion. <laughs> it's just reading this is killing me right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's pop it's popped up here, right? Who sat, down and, who sat down and did that? Was that, was that helping? Did help you just take the time to write that? Of course oh, it was helping. No, I, I, this, this looks like Proton material. You think, it's pro, you think it was pro Tom? <laughs> What's yeah, going on, Papa Rick? What's going on, chat? And while we're waiting for this, I appreciate all of you. I, I've seen so many names floating throughout this uh, that I haven't seen in forever. Who, who, who were some of us? I saw, I saw um, MGW floating throughout there a little while ago. I, hold on, let me scroll up real quick. Ryan. I saw Pat, the absolute goat. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Black Sheep in chat. You know, I'm seeing Legulas. I'm seeing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing everybody, you know? I'm Great seeing Charles is floating around there a second ago, always hyping mm -hmm. things up. Uh, it, honestly, it's just, it's just good to see it's good to see everybody back. Even though we can't see each other in person, it's nice to see. I hope every one of you are doing great uh, in, in keeping your head up, even though all of what we're going through right nowadays is very annoying, but we're going to get through it. Kind of like we're going to get through this set. Finally, we're getting into the next match of the match we tried to play before. It is time to continue the set of Sinji versus Numbers. Mm -hmm. And once again, they're just going to open up the best way that they know how Numbers getting Sun Salutation and Deep Bleeding on deck. Sinji getting his bonus this food out you know both of them are like taking the time to charge up a little bit you know like they respect each other's face they're like hey you know we, we might as well just get it up man i decided to look back in the chat i wish i didn't hit all right so we're here <laughs> honestly it's a uh, it, well, we're like 20 percent uh, 20 seconds already in and we're looking at only 15 to 22 both of them in positions exactly what we're expecting just kind of chilling out hanging on the sides waiting uh to see who's gonna budge first so far it's been slightly numbers budging first but just kind of been caught by a few straight hits mm -hmm. and just like john is trying to be able to hit that hydrogen back at Sinji, but i like the way that Sinji has changed the way that a pac-man would normally use hydrogen he doesn't immediately try to fall with back on it he's not priming it he's using it in such a defensive way um rather than like in a passive aggressive one so that he can just always shield himself and then still be able to shoot it back Honestly, I think that's like the most descriptive thing you can say about these two, right? It's just passive aggressive. They're both just putting out warning shots all the time, hoping that one of them actually hits. It's just like, all right, look, no, you budge, no, you budge, no, you get hit, no, you get, oh crap, you got hit, I go in now. Like, it's just, it, it's just that war of attrition that really just establishes how smart these two are, but also just the commitment to refusing to acknowledge, uh, like, go in, because they completely acknowledge how dangerous that is. Their patience, uh, just to be able to sit here and, and to do that, and when we had offline stuff happening, to do that week after week, uh, they are stronger men than, uh, than I ever will be. Uh, they're one, even one of them is stronger than both of us combined. Um, but wow, right now Sinji's just fighting his way out of the corner. Once again, just really good use of the Laxian. I like the way that John is respecting it because that move can do so much damage so quickly. You are not wrong at all about that patience factor. I would have been ran in by now and I would have been hit by so many Gallagher strings or taking 20 sun salutations to the face and I can't do a damn thing about it. But <laughs> so the, the How did John just take 40? How did he just, he had, he was like 50% below Sinji. How did he just take 40 so quickly? That Gallagher built different. The, the surprise burst windows of Pac-Man are so strong, which is why this matchup goes so slow because Pac-Man just gets so much damage so fast. Like a lot of people will talk about how bursty, you know, like say like a, a young Link is, right? You look at your percent, you're at zero. Next thing you know, you're at 80 because you took 20 projectiles to the face and you got hit by forward airs. But when it comes to Pac-Man, it comes off of like two things. <laughs> Galaga hit into forward air up airs and uh, a key catching you on a high recovery. Good job by Sinji. I mean, like Sinji's just placement there and spacing was immaculate, was able to catch John, and now John is just looking for any opportunity he can to charge up his resources before going in. But, you know, like this is definitely like with John, like, like if you would, if you were to say that he struggled at a party to play, it'd be like at this stage, right? So he's at a deficit. How does he break space against Sinji, who's sitting at stage of not challenging him at ledge? Right, so John is not finding ways to steal stocks quickly off the stage. Sinji, you know, is totally content sitting at center stage and letting John get back on. Absolutely, you know, <laughs> Nick, see your life be maybe a circus, but this match is a comedy. This is really just the way that, like, you have to utilize the options of staying patient, finding your way back in, and then retreating in a proper way. It's just, it's it's crazy. And now Sinji, now that because he's up a stock and has a bit of room, he's willing to go and get a few hits here and there and then dip because that's slowly starting to chip at that lead. And this takes away from numbers being able to set up because that's really the strength of the matchup is when numbers can actually hang back and not worry about going in. For sure, and as soon as the members tries to come in off stage with a double jump, but there's too many resources, Sanju recognizes that, exploits his own jump height, and just goes for the side B immediately to get back on. And now John finding the conversion off of Sanju's own bell, able to bring him up with a down smash, and just like that, that's exactly what he needs to be back in the running. 
Honestly, and even at 82%, this match is borderline even because uh, like Shinji has to get in. He has to get the stock soon because now numbers is get. Yeah, you see, numbers is playing mid range a bit more. He's staying center stage, trying to bury Shinji into the corner. However, that back throw is a really good call to get that done and gets called. But good di up towards the corner. He's actually gonna avoid that, but another one of those will take the stock. Yeah, for sure. And right now, John just sort of playing back a little bit, just not wanting to hit the Hydra preemptively, understanding that Sinji is waiting for it, trying to react to it, maybe punish John, you know, when he's stuck, extending his hitbox. Wow, you have to be, you know, both wary of the projectile, of, of the key, and the falling Hydra as well. Such two menacing tools. Sitting in shield is exactly what you have to be doing. And right now, John sort of playing back a little bit, trying to challenge Sinji, trying to stop him. What, what an f tilt! Wow, that was beautiful time. Yeah, honestly, the fact that he dodged that is crazy. This, this matchup almost feels like when you're trying to teach a pet new tricks, you just constantly reward him with treats. Like, hey, look, I'm leaving you this opening. Go ahead, come in. <laughs> Psych! <laughs> Go ahead. Just instead of going for the Hydrant, the past few times that Sinji has gone for, it actually scared numbers possibly into the option oh, that, that might be there. Yeah. And now he's going all the way off stage, but yeah. gets reversed within the magnifying zone, getting I, caught by the header. I was like, this could be it. And, and I guess it was. But it's always number is the one that you ex never expect to be able to steal stocks like that. Because wow, we fit off stage has access to down air and side view and forward air for some reason that spikes behind her. And number is really knows how to make excellent use out of it. Yeah, honestly, and you see, just seeing the usage out of that is so impressive. And it, if he could get a hold of the belt or catch a few of Sinji's items throughout the stock, this could easily turn to numbers' favor. Now that he's the stock behind, Sinji before can be okay with taking a little bit of damage because he has a whole stock to play with. But the KO power and deep breathing is still always in numbers' favor. So he has to be very careful where he decides to throw those items. Unless he just decides to chuck it right at him while he's charging. You, you ever watch Demon Slayer? Like, like Numbers right now is just like looking for like that thread to follow. You know, he's looking for that thread, that perfect window of opportunity to chase and get in there. Uh, and right now he's like slowly able to find it, but Senji just not hasn't been able to land like a good solid hit. Um, now, aside from a couple of one-ups. Now don't be mad. I haven't finished Demon Slayer, but if you talk about Jujutsu Kaisen, it's not like that. I'm just kidding. I don't know where I'm going with this reference, but we're looking for a back air. Almost catches with the volley off to the side he's gonna read something off the ledge there's the f tilt that's gonna yep. take it at 22 seconds left wow uh number was really able to pull that one out and honestly um that was just like a huge call out to Sinji. like hey buddy you want to take those stocks early you want to you want to try to speed run this absolutely not the game punishes you for doing that numbers was ready for it he was able to get the spike and i think that was really the definitive stock because it defined the pace for the rest of the game where sinji was like oh my god i'm stuck at one stock look at pac-man's eyebrows <laughs> he is so shocked you know what's crazy about that whole situation whoa, too? whoa, whoa, like, whoa. <laughs> he's like whoa 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 <laughs> that shield poke you're gonna look but, at me and tell me that shield poked honestly one of those things that like about that situation, so many people wouldn't be as confident to just run up to somebody's shield like that and just hit it with an F tilt because it's probably going to get punished, right? But because Pac-Man has such good out-of-shield options, being directly up against Sinji like that might have actually baited Sinji to want to try and nair out of shield or forward air out of shield to just get out. Because usually you just want to roll there to avoid it, but because it's so close, shield. you might just want to press it. Like, like John hit him through his shield. Like, he was in jump squad or anything. He just, he just hit him through it. It, like, 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 that was, that was just, like, such an unbelievable interaction. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, be careful with your air dodge. That will destroy us. As slow as these matches can go, numbers can steal stock pretty quick, too, with one of those spikes. He has a few of them available to him, so you got to be careful with that reverse forward air, the down air, the header. It's just so many options. And then there is the great equalizer that is Pac-Man's combo damage. For sure. And then that's the exact landing that Sinji is looking for. Numbers not going to be able to be carried away by the stretcher. Um, just like a little bit too close uh, still to the stage. And now, ooh, baits the getup attack, but an excellent punish on it. Not gonna be able to find the stock quite yet. What oh a my menace God. angle. That the angle the, was beautiful. The option coverage was so crazy there. Cause you roll in, you get hit. You jump up, you get hit. You decide to do something and give him the bell, you get hit. <laughs> and so numbers takes the first lead. The, the biggest mistake that you can do is it's like give Sinji a little bit too much time on stage, right? Give him mm -hmm. too much time. He finds a way to cover basically everything that you can do while you try to guess and navigate your way back on. So the goal is like, you have to delay your timing, but delay it a little bit too much, get a little bit too passive with it. And suddenly you find yourself back into the corner. Numbers has just been struggling to be able to get a hit this entire stop. 
No follow up on the bell. Wow. Honestly, like, I, your description is actually pretty accurate with the way it comes to Sinji, too. It's almost like where people try to talk about Batman beating everybody, right? Batman with prep will beat everyone. Sinji with prep will annoy you to death and beat you. It, you just, you try to get in, you try to find a way in, but he is completely content because he knows you're going to just, you're going to bite. You're going to want to go in, and he takes advantage of that so well. Right now, like, Sinji just looking for any way to be able to take this off. Nobody's he's able to get up and out of the up throw, but you can't be a little bit too comfortable throwing out those projectiles. You have to be cognizant of which projectiles are able to, you know, deal enough percent that they get past yours. You have to know which ones have trampling on them and just, you know, don't kill what they go through. But wow, oh my Sinji's follow-up. Sinji's head chases on plants. I like the, f the fact that the last two times Sinji found the opening too, after realizing there was nothing that he could really do post that point, a lot of times you'll want to go in, and yeah, you definitely want, well, I would like for him to go in right now, but it's, you reset, you get yourself set back up, because that's going to allow you to get your toolkit available to you again, and allow you to find another one of those big damage openings, because it was pretty even up until that point. For sure, um, you just, you know, you give Sinji a little bit too much respect once, you don't, like, really maneuver around Galaxian, like, another time, and then suddenly you're eating just unspeakable Ooh! amount of Shout Is that the Arturo? Is that the man? Oh, thank you for the follow coming through here. Shout but, out to helping set us up with the Macherino. Yo, Arturo the GOAT with the Macherino. Appreciate you for having us and getting us some hype as we have been falling to sleep. But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but honestly, oh, you got to be careful here. That mix-up is so dangerous and somehow, some way, <laughs> numbers got through it. Wow, and it's going to be the hydrant and the uh, trampoline platform set up, but John Numbers so comfortable and ready to recognize that you have to wait. You have to wait, you have to stall, and you have to hope that you're not at ledge there because that hydrant will hit you in your ledge hang. You can't jump in, you can't roll in, you can't neutral get up, you can't get up attack. You are stuck. So that was an excellent stall, beautiful way. Oh, down around a shield. That's a really good option to try and back him off. What is he going to do about it there? Oh, my God. You want, you want to see him mix up? What's he going to go for? It actually just backs off. I'm actually pretty surprised, but that backer is going to just reset up the whole situation again. Look at this, 171%, and I still very much believe that Numbers might actually be the one to take this next stock. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's not boost. He takes it whenever he pleases it. He holds on to his stocks, you know, as long as humanly possible. That app is still at 180. This is, uh -huh. this is witchcraft. This is witchcraft. How, what is, what is numbers DI? What, well, I don't know. Somehow still in, at 195, uses the F-Tilt to back off Sinji. Probably gonna looking for aggressive option to try to, to try and cover it with forward air. Still not dying at 204 plus. And look at the timer. It's almost uh, the same as the percent, but it finally dies. What do you do if, that, if there's like a hydrant like that, you know? Like that was just really good spacing for him, Sinji. Good recognition, good setup from all the way across the stage. The numbers were certainly not ready for it. Right now, Sinji looking with the stock later right now, and Numbers is trying to get in, but Hydrant and Melon and, you know, everything but the kitchen sink just pushing him back. Yeah, honestly, if he had it, he'd throw it. It's just, like, you were talking before how it's so hard to not look like a fool, but fool not being a fool it, following... I, I tried to make that clean, but thank you for the follow. <laughs> but it's just one of those things where, like... You want to respect that Hydra, right? But you, but you can't because if you stay back too long, Sinji just gets to cycle through his fruit and find exactly what he wants for the situation. So, like using sun salutations in headers is one thing, but if you out, if you don't position it correctly, you might die. <laughs> that stall was immaculate. The way that Sinji just recognized, hey, I can get away with doing this under the stage here, but finds the up smash out of the barely catching the jump mash out, and just like that, he is back in it. This is within the realm of doability for numbies. What? It just holds it. Honestly, <laughs> I, I I completely agree with just holding shield there. Don't try to move the items in hand. You try to jump, you take a hit. You try to move too quick, you take a hit. But look, oh, there it oh is anyways. God. You decided to move and now you're at 96%. You done goofed. Now, I love the way that Sinji just re grabs the Galaxian. He throws it out, he jumps, catches it with an air dodge back in. That is such a smart way to go about it as well because he's able to safely retreat while still having the thought of the pressure of the hitbox itself. So smart. You know what Sinji is so good at too? When it comes to the fact that there's such good kill power for deep breathing, Sinji makes sure that not only does he use things like that up beyond a shield, but he stays on the go to prevent any of these like falling near into up smashes that could just take a game away. Like he's removing the ability to cheat from his playbook and that board smash lingered so long. That move, that move is out there for so long. It just lasts decades, uh, honestly. Um... 
Well, we only have 30 seconds Goodbye. on the clock, and Sinji able to clean it up with the bell. This is the third consecutive game five. Man, we're, we're gonna do a long one today, huh? I thought I might. I thought I might eat again today. I thought. I'm not going to. I've almost okay, finished though. having my entire it's dinner okay. during this set. <laughs> De Devin, De look, we don't get Devil Devin commentary because he's too busy doing the smart movie into the background. But we get one more game because both these players trying to eat. There's a big pop bonus attached to this. And honestly, I respect the fact that I if you're going to play for it, you better play it right. Being defensive if you have to in this matchup, as long as you're getting a piece of that pot, that's all you got to need to do. Getting into game five, probably still on town and city. Who do you got? Because I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you try to try to put a five on this, but uh, um, wow. I honestly, I have no idea. They just keep going back and forth, and like who actually like holds on to advantage. It's like just changes so quickly. It seems like they both have like this bit of an X factor to them. As soon as Sinji has a Galaxian in hand, he can deal 60%, you know, at the drop of a hat. But as soon as Sinji goes off stage against Nubus, you have to think to yourself, can he lose a stock at 20%? Honestly, both of them are completely capable of doing it. It's just that they're they're so reserved and trying to make sure that they don't mess up because they understand the importance when you said it before game like a stock lead between these two is just such a difference maker because both the games that the numbers won he had the stock lead and he held it comfortably and it's just but because sinji's been having a stock lead of late and holding on to it well it reverses the fortune it's kind of nuts like it's basically like watching chess but whatever happened to move first yeah, definitely. And right now, just like Sinji, just like holding on to a lot of this tempo. But John, able to get a bit of damage, calls out the food pull with the sun salutation, um, and just doing what he does best, rotating at ledge. Uh, Sinji just keeps on respecting it, understands that he has plenty of time. He doesn't have to go back in immediately. I love the use of Cherry just as a means of, you know, like this all coverage option and great angle on the apple as well. Yeah, very similar to the way that the Cherry's been used, right? Just like a slow bounce that kind of just annoys the attempt of whether you want to stall. It's really good at just kind of controlling things, uh, you know, frames. But what's what's the option here? Looks Looking for some kind of getup, but numbers didn't budge, and yet Sinji still baited him into the getup attack. And it's crazy to think that, like, you know, like every single time, like, John just keeps him regenerating all of his health, but just finds himself eating it back up so quickly from the Galaxian. Wow. They're just respecting one another's space. Nobody wants to intrude on it. Look what happens. Sinji touches the ground at that distance, unsafely, eats a sun salutation. No incentive to approach. Yeah, honestly, not given one. No, no point because if you go in, you're asking for trouble, takes a fire hydrant to the face, and getting ever much so closer to death. But, mm -hmm. oh, Sinji gets the grab. Recognize he decided to go for the fire hydrant. It's, I think Sinji's trying to set up another down air attempt off stage. It looks like he's trying to look for it because he hasn't really gone for it the past few times. But trying to force him to maybe go low. I mean, with no one here, you don't really have to worry about that. But the buffy ledge roll is so smart, recognizing that Sinji could not have possibly covered it at that position. It goes far enough to the point that, you know, a back through on Bell wouldn't have been able to get it. Um, that was just really, really smart. And Sinji was not able to punish the lead grab. Could be able to still catch the Bell and catch John's idleness. Whoever takes the stock, it's going to be so huge. And how does Numbers navigate through this, you know? Bye. No. Oh, no. my God. The move. <laughs> he somehow missed. And DI again from the upper, going off to the corners. Numbers still hanging out and gets the key. Steals it away. What's he going to do about it? Tries to read a roll, but does not hit him. Yeah. And somehow no stocks are lost. Just like forced a lot of Sinji's movement, forcing it with the hydrogen, controlling a lot of space with the key as well, but still no follow up. Just throws out a key. John runs into it. Sinji takes the stock lead. Uh, the first stock, by the way, um, and we we only have three and a half minutes on the clock, baby. I was just about to point that out too. I just noticed it's been four minute mark. One stock is finally gone. Both, I mean, look, it really wouldn't be a number Sinji set if there's not a set that possibly goes to more time a few times. But honestly, I miss this, man. I miss this. I don't, I don't think you understand how much I miss this pain. It, it's like it's like eating buffalo wings, you know? They're, they're spicy. They'll bite you back. But they're enduring at the end of the day, you know? I don't know, man. I'm not this. really a big fan of trying to just, like, eat for pain. And that is just one of those good options right there. Back air, out of shield once again. Honestly, Dara, like, what... What, what can we even say? Like, I would love to have, like, some analysis that I could say that would change up the way that they're playing. But really, that usually involves multiple mix-ups. When the yeah. mix is just hit once and dip, what, what, what do they do to do to change it? Sure. Um, 
I wouldn't be able to tell it because they're not interacting with one another, right? They're playing their <laughs> own games on the opposite side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Looks for the roll in. Tries to cover him with the Galaga again, looking for the low recovery, but backs off. This is so goofy. I love this. I, I, I'm enjoying this so much. Like, <laughs> wow. Oh, that, oh, that was actually clean. That, finding the way back on, that's something that Numbers oh, really hasn't been using too much. Wall jump into Bira first salutation as a mix up for approach. Yeah. Oof. Uh, I love like the way that John has started to mix up the way that they're using Sun Salutation off the ledge, making it really difficult for Sinji to be able to catch them anytime that they hold fully, they just end up eating a couple of hits. Once again, this game is looking dead -y. Like is that it's actually insane to me because I've been waiting for another down air attempt, but most of the KO there well, I mean there it is there, but most of the KOs came for Sinji by recovering uh by, by forcing numbers low and beating that out with down air. Numbers has completely removed that, which is kinda nice. Nuts at how well he's been able to adjust that, and I think that's a big factor is why this game's so much more even because that was a huge KO option for Sinji that's pretty much gone. Yeah, for sure. Right now, uh, Sinji still has the ability to be able to get the out of shield options that he needs, punishing that unsafe dash that attack. So this is looking so difficult, running out of options, but John not pressing anymore before he decides to take the time once again just to go back and charge Sun Salutation. It is so difficult to juggle Pac Man. He can side B, he can down B, he can double jump and still land with a hitbox. He has all of these tools um, at his disposal. Quite confident on numbers too, because staring down Pac-Man with Bell at this percent, it's kind of like the same as staring down Little Mac with KO Punch. A any mistake oh. could KO and the reverse it have to hold on. <laughs> numbers actually takes the lead back. <laughs> now Sinji has to be the one to find the KO. You know he's looking for it. <laughs> I don't think there's any way in hell we don't go to last knock here. I mean, this has to happen, it's inevitable, but I have to say, John is slowly starting to pile on this damage, and the biggest difference between the two, John can make this percent back, Sinji <laughs> holds on to it, but still he doesn't die! Back. <laughs> wow. 45 seconds left! There's a only, uh, only so many mistakes left that uh, numbers could be afforded to get away with, it, but he's just wow. killing now. He gets a downer! We are still at the last stock. 35 seconds left. Numbers could easily put on 53%. Sinji has to be so careful unless Sinji finds an opening to get a massive percent lead and walk away with the this W. This Galaxian could be huge. <gasps> that's the Galaxian. Finds the four-lead. Kaz Nambu is off stage, but that's exactly where he wants to be. He is not going anywhere anytime soon. Both of them diving so deep. This is anybody's game still, but John, huge lead. He, he needs to run. My man's need to make sure that he's running. Decided to go for the Epto. He has a comfortable percent lead now. This is pretty much it. This if Numbers just decides it. to run away, yeah, it's yeah. 145. Yeah, it is. It's Sinji's just going to wow. fall to death, understanding that is over. What a roller coaster. And that's pretty much how that roller coaster ride always comes oh to a close. God. Game five, last stock, last few seconds, timeout. And that is your Xeno Classic. <laughs> we wouldn't have it any other way. I missed this, man. This was this was this was incredible. Sinji just was making sure this was not going to sudden death. He he took his death honorably. He went off. He you know he did it on his own terms. Wow. Uh, jeez. Oh was, my god. That was that was something. Look, look, look. I'm not gonna lie. I think yeah. that might have been foreshadowing for grand finals. I'm not trying to Ooh. I'm not Ooh. trying to hit on anybody or like hate on anybody who's left the bracket. I would love to see some really good matches. But from the play that these two just exhibited, hey, I don't know. What? I don't know if somebody's breaking Sinji's defense. Like somebody needs to get in, in hard, like to destroy Sinji's defense, because that set was insane on how good he was navigating around numbers, and numbers still found a way to win. I mean, I mean, to me, like this was like John didn't even break Sinji's defense. He just built up a better one for himself. He just yeah. had a bigger shield. Um, at some points in that game, that was, I mean, that was, that was absurd. <laughs> it, like, I love how, like, those first two stocks, they just spent so much time not actually committing against one another. They just sat at the ledge, sat center stage, and thank you so much to Jam. Let's go, time. Jam, for the sub. Yeah! I got, I had to repeat that one. That was a big one. Applause in the chat. Honestly, like, I don't, like, I'm a big fan of analyzing things in depth, right? Trying mm -hmm. to figure out what was going wrong, how can things change? And really a majority of that is just both players have such a deep understanding of their mm -hmm. like each other's habits that that's why there's so much respect. 
because nobody can afford to overdo anything. If they you, if, it, they lose this talk. You know, John tries to push in a little bit too far against Sinji. He eats 60 of Galaxian, you know, yep. he eats some ridiculous key and hydrogen setup, you know. Sinji tries to go a little bit too deep off stage against John once. John established, hey, you go off stage against me that deep, I am spiking you. You want to go that deep? You think you, you can actually go in? You think you have enough plus games? Absolutely not. You yep. still end up finding your way to the blast zone. So John is just like so, they're both so good at pushing their own game plans. So it's like when two worlds collide, you know, it's like uh, what happens when an immovable object meets an immovable object? There's no unstoppable voice. They're yeah, just both immovable. <laughs> definitely not the scenario they were intent anticipating with that. Uh, it is also crazy too because like the matchup in itself, a majority of what makes, uh, you know, we fit so strong in this game is how good that deep breathing is and the ability to just take stocks away mm -hmm. at really low percents it's basically saying cloud you can't have limit that's the way that Sinji plays that matchup and numbers has to play the, just the vanilla version mm -hmm. of we fit most of the time outside of projectiles 